I think the, the 1960s was a particularly interesting time for, for jazz artists because they were really defining their role in the music spectrum. Uh, if you go back 15 or 20 years before, a lot of the musicians who were jazz musicians were trying to fulfill a lot of roles and not particularly specialised as jazz musicians as such. So they played in the dance bands or they played in uh, Broadway show type bands. Strip clubs, whatever was going. A lot of them aspired at that stage to uh, the classical soloists, Yasha Heifetz, people like that. Stan Guest was one of those musicians who grew up having very high aspirations for his playing. So he and his contemporaries, people like Charlie Parker, often looked at uh, musicians playing legitimate music as they called it, or the classical music of the day, uh, as something to graduate towards or to play for, for recognition as much as their artistic development. The thing that makes something like Focus interesting is that uh, when somebody like Charlie Parker or Clifford Brown got the opportunity to work with strings, they often played with a schmaltzy Hollywood style string backing, um, which they felt good about because it that framed their instruments nicely, but by and large the string players were not necessarily being exploited for their technical prowess and skills. A focus fulfills the role of really starting to push both boundaries. Stan Getz, uh, with his great lyricism, was able to really bring some beautiful characters out of the pieces using them as accompaniment, but there's no sacrifice in the accompaniment for the, for the string players. Uh, the whole idea of third string is, is important. Um, you can hear influences, classical influences in this piece, from Bartok to Bell to C. You hear references in, I think, every single one of these, these The challenge for me was to reduce the number of parts down to string quartet plus bass. There's a lot of really lush string writing in this that's really beautiful. What I ended up doing was finding the bits that were the most compelling for me, that sounded, sounded the most uh, interesting, and just lifted out those parts, kind of cleared, cleared away the rest of it. What's interesting to be playing this piece as a string player is it gives us string players a chance to, to play jazz without feeling like we necessarily have to improvise. <laughs> but it gives us a, cha a chance to kind of bridge, bridge the gap between classical and jazz and really make it a chamber music experience. the aspect of performing it together and collaborating, you do have to be flexible in a way. So I think that's what makes it fun for us to do here. Every time we've done it, it's always going to be different. It's always a unique experience. We are going to run a program for straight ahead class for chamber music in which the Alexander String Quartet will be joined by a colleague Juan André Bruna, a wonderful Spanish clarinetist. Concurrent with that, Andrew Spate, with his quartet, will also be running a program that is focusing on jazz combos. Both of those uh, areas, classical, chamber ensemble, jazz combo, and of course this third stream area where we cross over and cultivate um, some better understanding of each other's genres.